Hi everyone, welcome to another review. This is the Maztec M3900, uh, 2000 count multimeter, um, voltage capacity of 700 volts AC and 1000 volts DC. It does measure resistance up to 20 mega ohm and also the um, diode and continuity. Um, it's a no frills multimeter. Actually, it's not super cheap because this had cost me approximately $29, $30 US, around 40 Canadian, 45 Canadian. So yeah, it's really, I mean, for, for what you're getting, um, I'm certainly not gonna call it a cheap priced multimeter. But um, what do you get in the box? Well, you get the multimeter, you get the box, and you get these um, Maztec leads. Uh, I don't like the Maztec leads. Um, they feel okay. Uh, they look okay. They're quite pointy, quite sharp. But as you'll soon find out, um, if you do any sort of continuity uh, circuit board testing, what have you, you don't want to use these leads. Um, so it's going to be a quick review, so let's get right to it. Um, this is the on off switch and right away there's something I don't like about it is the fact that you really have to dig in there just to turn this device on um, so yeah thumbs down for the on off switch um, we'll start with the ohms I will hook up the Maztec leads and we're going to measure a 200 ohm 1% high precision resistor Make sure you can see this okay. It's uh, non-auto ranging, so it's all manual as well. Um, it also comes with a transistor tester. Um, it doesn't bother me. Some people really, you know, despise the transistor testers. Um, I, I don't mind either way. It's it's always a, another feature, so why not? Okay, here we go with the resistor test. So that was really quick. So 199, um, that's a 200 ohm, 1% precision resistor. So that was fast. No complaints in that department. Doesn't measure capacitance. So looks like we won't be testing that. You try the diode. Once again, another low powered red LED. Nothing there, reverse it. And there we are with the voltage drop being displayed. So it does light the LED. This is powered by a nine volt battery. So that's always a bonus. Now let's try the continuity test. Um, we're gonna start with the Maztec probes. Here we go. I apologize for the glare. Uh, as you can tell here, horrible. Scratched, non-latching. But honestly, it's because of these terrible probes. So what I do in the odd video is to take the probes that this multimeter comes with and, oh, sorry, Bob. And I throw them in the garbage. And instead, we're gonna try a continuity test with one of my favorite, my go-to Sanwa probes. I will plug those in. And now we'll hear what it sounds like. Wow, night and day. Um, it goes to, basically it sounds like it's latched much louder. I'm not even putting pressure. So it just goes to show you what good probes can do for an inexpensive multimeter, as I demonstrated in a previous video as well. I mean, that's great, awesome. So really the continuity feature function is, is, is very good on this meter. It's just the probes are holding it back. Um, 
what we'll do now is a quick uh, voltage test. So we're going to switch this over to volts being manual range. And I'm going to bring in, as I always do, Mr. Trusty Fluke. It's always a nice to have a benchmark. And I'm going to plug in the probes and we'll just do a very quick test. Uh, a lot of people use voltage for a basic multimeter testing. It's one of the go-tos, so I think it's always good to at least do a, a quick voltage test on any multimeter. Alrighty. So I'm using a DC power supply and we're going to start with uh, 3.8 volts. I hope you can see that okay and I think you can. By the way, the display on this Maztec is actually not bad. I'm quite surprised. Uh, the digits are, are, are large, larger than the Fluke in this case, and uh, they're, they're quite clear. The no is, there is no backlight, so um, yeah, buyer beware. But uh, that being said, uh, it is a nice display. It's only 2,000 counts, so obviously you're not going to have the same resolution as you do on the Fluke, but um, here we go. Okay, we're at 8.4 volts. So about three counts different from the fluke. Bring it up to 9.9, .9. now we're 10.3. All right, so still about three counts out, 10.35 to 10.38. Bring it up, now we're at 13.2 volts and four counts out. Up to 17.3 volts, 17.42, 17.36. Yeah, we're at 22.9 volts. Oh, I have to bring it up to the higher voltage setting. So 22.8, 22.9. Now 29.8. And finally, I'm going to max it up to 31.5, the max that my power supply is capable of. 31.6 to 31.4. So all in all, um, yeah, not bad, really. I mean, uh, comparing a you know five hundred dollar Fluke to a thirty five dollar Maztec, um, I can't complain in this respect. All right. So as always, thank you, Mr. Fluke. Back to the star of the show. The last thing we're going to look at is the inside of this Maztec. So power off. There's one screw on the back here, which I've already undone, and it just comes off ever so lightly. So a little bit of shielding, not much, but I mean, at least they put something in there. I'm always amazed at manufacturers that, you know, put absolutely no shielding in the back of a multimeter. It's, it needs to be shielded. So uh, thumbs up for that. Now looking at the actual device itself, there's the, 9 volt battery and you've got a very small glass fuse and it's the date on this board is dated March 1st 2012 so that's interesting considering I just purchased this two months ago and we're now in 2017 so this has obviously been around for a while okay we'll pop that off very carefully and we'll bring it around Whoopa, look at that. Very interesting. Um, let's see if we can see that here. So you've got uh, a really nice current shunt here. Uh, quite large. Uh, impressed. Um, a lot of cap capacitors here. We have a trim pot, looks like, over there. And some uh, resistors. Maybe some clapping going on here for... The, um, do my eyes deceive me or are those PTCs? Looks like two of them. Um, this is the transistor tester, um, piezo or the speaker. Um, I'm not sure what the IC is. There's the infamous glob. I'm just looking inside. So they do have the cob being globbed. Um, 
so I don't know exactly what the IC is. I will find out for you, however. Um, very interesting. I don't know if you can see this down here, but you've got a, uh, a coil. And I'm not sure how that relates to the input protection. Um, I haven't seen that before, but that's very, uh, very interesting. Another resistor array down here. Uh, it says 2 amp, 250 volts. And I don't know, are those the inner diodes? So, you know, on the one side here, it's, you know, extremely sparse. There are simple little glass fuse, but on the other side, you know, it looks fairly well made. Uh, I'm quite surprised. Um, hmm, more than I was expecting. The new liter, 9 volt battery that it shipped with, you know, we're going to get rid of that awfully quick. So, mm, there you have it. Looks like we have some decent input protection, and uh, I gotta say, it's a little more than I was expecting. So, to finalize the uh, Maztec M3900. So, to finalize the Maztec M3900, I'm going to give it for construction a half star. Um, body case itself uh, it doesn't feel um, the greatest um, I wouldn't want to drop this from any uh, height not even a half a meter uh, there's no rubber holster on it um, that being said the selector switch does seem good I do not like the power input switch very cheap very uh, finicky uh, so a half star for construction ease of use um, it's non auto ranging so that's always going to be slightly prob problematic um, like I said, the selector switch does feel good. Um, I'm going to give it a half star in terms of ease of use. Feature set, well, once again, there's no backlight. Uh, it is a sparse multimeter. It doesn't do capacitance. Um, it does the basics. Continuity, when you throw away the Maztec probes it ships with and use a different set of probes, a better set of probes. In this case, I use the Sanwa probes. Uh, the continuity was great. I could definitely see using this on my bench. Um, uh, uh, I will give it a half star overall for the feature set. For input protection, once again, uh, I was quite surprised with the internals of this uh, multimeter. Better than I was expecting. No flux residue, no crappy soldering. Uh, everything looked uh, very well made. Now that being said, this was fabricated five years ago. So um, I'm not sure if this unit is still even in production. Um, I'm going to give it a half star in terms of input protection and robustness. And finally, for price and availability, well, this is very hard to find. Um, not a very popular multimeter. Um, it is running with a Maztec name. It used to denote a fair bit of quality. I'm, I think the quality has gone down for Maztec. Um, that being said, um, for a $30 multimeter, um, uh, I'm happy with it. Um, I wish. The, the externals were slightly different. I wish they had a better power switch. Um, I'm going to give it a half price, uh, sorry, a half star in terms of price and availability. So all told, we are looking at a total of 2.5 out of 5. Multimeter. Thanks for watching this meter review, and until next time, keep on testing.